Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at Ultimaker Cura 4.9 on a Mac Mini with the M1 chip. So I previously tried to use Ultimaker Cura 4.8 and I've had mixed results. Sometimes I've had it crash and give me different problems. So I wanted to test this new version and see how well it works. So to start off, I'll open up this Penguin Skull. It's an STL file. It's 87.7 megabytes. So if I double click on that, this will open up in Ultimaker Cura 4.8. And I'll put a link in the description to the hardware I'm using, meaning the Mac Mini with the M1, and also the 3D printer I typically use, which is the FLSun Q5. And I'll also put a link below to my FLSun Q5 playlist, where you can find my other 3D printing videos, and my Mac playlist, where you can find my other Mac videos. So our model did load here. You can zoom in on it. And this is running under Rosetta 2, so the performance is not as good as if it was native ARM code. And this is working pretty good, and this is the Ultimaker 4.8. So I have pretty basic settings here. Let me try and slice it. So I'm moving this around while it's slicing. And you can see all this unsupported area. I don't have supports turned on, it just looks cooler if I don't, and I'm not printing this right now, I'm just testing the software. Okay, so it says it's going to take three hours, 39 minutes to print, I'll hit preview. And this is where I've had trouble in the past with it crashing. So, so far so good. It's a little bit laggier than it was. Let me see if I can move this. And zoom in, change my layers. So, so far Cura 4.8 doesn't seem to be having any problems. So I'm going to download the Ultimaker 4.9. I'll hit download here. I'll agree to the tracking cookies and then I'll say download for free. Choose the Mac OS version. I'll hit download. And I'll close Cura. Okay, that's finished downloading, so I'll open it up. I'll hit Agree. I'll close out of Safari here while I'm waiting. Okay, we have the image open, so I'll drag this to the Applications folder. This is an older item exists in the location. Do I want to replace it? I'm going to say Stop for now. I'll go to my Applications folder. I'll go to Ultimaker Cura. And I actually have 4.7 on here. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'll just hit enter so I can change the name and I'll rename this to 4.8. Now I'll drag this over and it won't overwrite 4.8. Now I haven't had great results with Ultimate Kakura on the Mac Mini M1, so I could just delete these and I could also re-download them. Interesting thing here that the new version 4.9 is 608 megabytes where the old versions were around 370 each. So the application's a lot larger. I'll right click on this and go to get info. If I look under kind, it says application is Intel. Let me zoom in on that. So you can see here it says application Intel. So this is not Apple Silicon native, which doesn't surprise me. So I'll close out of here. I'll open up Ultimaker Cura. It says it was downloaded from the internet. Do I want to open it? I'll say open. I'll open my STL files back up. Okay, so it says what's new. There's a seamless workflow with the digital library in Ultimaker Digital Factory. So I have not used that. It says better visual representation. It says the Z-seam is now clearly indicated in preview mode. So you can see these little white pixels here is the Z-seam. So as you change these in your settings, you can see how it looks in the preview. It says line type is now the default color scheme. And it says learn more. So I'll hit next. So it doesn't seem like there's a lot of new big features in this. Here's some other things. It says weight estimation and decimals, split shell category and walls and top and bottom, post-processing script embed screenshot in 
G code, add checkbox for extruder offsets. It says Cura should work properly on macOS Big Sur now, afforded by upgrades to Python to 3.8 and QT to 5.15. If you had user experience, visual graphics card problems, specifically on newer macOS versions like Big Sur, you should be able to use this new version. Well, that's a good sign that it says it's supposed to work on Big Sur. And then it lists all these bug fixes here. So I'll close out of this. I'm just curious if the FLSUN Q5 is actually in here now. So I'll click on that. I'll click Add Printer. I'll click Add a Non-Networked Printer. I'll go down here to FL Sun, And it looks like the Q5 is not on here. So when I originally set this up, I set it up as the QQS, and I changed the print platform, the bed size, to 200 millimeters. I think the QQS is 220 or something like that. So I'll go back to my desktop here, and I'll open up Penguin Skull. That opened up very quickly, although I just had it open, so maybe it would have cached part of it. Zoom in here. This seems to be pretty snappy. I'll slice it. So I'm not speeding this up so you can see exactly how long it takes to slice this model. And if you want this model, I'm pretty sure I found it on Thingiverse, so you could probably search for Penguin Skull and find this. Okay, it looks like it's almost finished here. Okay, it says it takes 3 hours 44 minutes. I'll preview it, okay. So again, it's a little laggy. Drag down through the layers. So print, I don't think I've actually even printed this model, but I typically don't print models this complicated. So if you have simpler models, this will have better performance. We'll check that out in a minute. But thus far, this seems to be working pretty good. I'll hit save to disk. And that seems to have worked. We have the G code here. So let's try a different model. I'll close this. So on a Mac, you can hit space and preview STL files. So it's kind of handy. Look for something that looks kind of complicated, 17 megabytes. I'll open that up. Okay, there we go. So I always get this message, it says the file has been modified, would you like to reload the STL? I don't know what causes that. I'll close that. But I've obviously not modified that file. I'll hit slice here. Okay, that sliced pretty quick, I'll hit preview. So it still seems a little bit laggy. Let's go through the layers. That lagged a little bit there, but it's usable. My first computer had a cassette recorder to load data on, so a slight bit of lag isn't going to bother me at all. Close this. Let me find something that's smaller and simpler. Here's a penguin model. Slice that. Okay, that sliced very quickly. I'll hit preview. So this simpler model 
isn't lagging quite so much in preview mode. Seems to be keeping up. And you can see that seam here going down the back. So you could go through your settings and change that if you didn't want that seam to show up. Save the disk on this. And there it is. So I just wanted to make this quick video testing out Ultimaker Cura 4.9 on a Mac Mini with M1 processor. In my short test, I haven't noticed any problems. Performance seems to be okay. On the more complex models, it did lag a little bit. So if you had models that were more complex than the ones I showed, then it would probably have even more lag. I didn't have any crashing like I've had in the past. It does seem to be able to export these files out, so that's good. If you've been having problem with Ultimaker Cura on Big Sur or Max with the M1 processor, I would recommend trying out Ultimaker 4.9. And like I did, you can rename your previous version, so you can always go back to it if you have trouble with the new versions. So I obviously can't test everything. That would take forever uh, to test like every setting. But if you have the older versions and you have trouble with a specific feature, drop a comment below and I can maybe test it on this version on my system and see if it's working. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.